Hello and welcome to more Modern Cube. Ooh, Mind Shatter? The fixed Mind Twist? It just cost one black more, and suddenly it's like an unplayable card instead of a Windmill Slam Bomb. That's crazy. I like Counterspell. It's just a strong, efficient card. Wait, isn't this Modern Cube? Huh, I guess Counterspell's in Modern now. I don't know where that came from. But that seems pretty good. Uh, there's a Tarka. Four mana Chandra I love, but I've been drafting red a lot. I think if you do want to win, just red aggro in Modern Cube is so good. Because it's like almost as good as it is in Vintage Cube. But you, you just play it in Modern Cube. So it's quite good. We're going to take Counterspell and draft a more interesting deck. There's also Subtlety. It's fine. Um, it basically like remands a spell to their hand. It's good if you can cast it from your... Like as a four mana three three flyer. And that's quite good, but the evoke effect, I guess it stops you from dying in certain situations, but otherwise it's a bit medium. I love sensor. This is black white. Um, it's just so good. It's like four spike or mana tithe, but the fact that you can cycle it if it's not good in the like mid to late game just makes this card insane. Um, it's just interactive too. Like the thing that I want to be doing with blue decks, just interacting with my opponent. Um I like Spell Queller. Blue-White Tempo is interesting. I'm really interested in a blue-red spells deck, like Flame Spill and Counter Spell and Roast. I don't love Disallow, but we could just like cut blue really, really hard and try and go Mono Blue. Um, I think Mono Blue in this cube does struggle a little bit because you like you just end up being too reactive and you get blown out. So I think actually we're just going to take Polluted Delta because um, Blue-Black can be quite good. Blue-Red River Guide path Pathway can be solid. I might take that. Um, the other option is like a Riftwing Cloud Skate. I'm just not in love with the three mana counter spells. They're they're fine. Like I'll put one in my deck, but I'm not gonna take them this early. Um, Riftwing is pretty good, but I really do want to draft Blue Red Counter Burn or like something. Like I just want to put Electrolyze in a deck. I love Electrolyze. It's so fun, and this sets me up to do that. Or like Prismari Command is pretty sweet. Oh wow. Um, Path to Exile is good, Jace Balaran is good, Glenelendra is good, Steam Vents is good. Um, this is really tough. I'm looking at Steam Vents. I really do like Jace. This is just such a solid card draw engine. It is also mono blue. Like, I like Glen too. She's quite a bit better in Vintage Cube when, like, creatures aren't as strong. Um, because you could play Glen and your opponent just has, like, Skyclave Apparition, Glorybringer, Shriek Maw, things like that, and then this card just doesn't do anything. In Vintage Cube, you can be fairly confident that Glenn's going to be good, unless your opponent's playing green. I'm going to take Jace passing Steam Vents. Uh, yeah. I think cutting blue here is important. It looks like blue is open, and if we keep passing blue cards to take, like, a Steam Vents, then we're just kind of making sure... Ooh, Vendillion Click. See, this is why I wanted red. Expression of Iteration is so gross. Two mana, draw two out of the top three. It's very good, but Vendillion Click is a solid card. Clearwater Pathway would also be good, but... Honestly, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we just end up mono blue. Here, I'll take a Hengegate Pathway, passing a Thalia. Westville Abbey, cast out would be nice. Well, there's a Gideon. Um, Gideon goes very well with everything that I have. There's also Forked Bolt, but that card is... Yeah, we're just going to take Gideon. Forked Bolt is fine. Gideon just closes games out so quickly. Like, basically, the problem with these types of, like, counterspell decks is if your opponent resolves a creature then you get into a position where you have a hard time like dealing with the board. Gideon just deals with the board. He just makes them all attack him. You don't take any damage. He kills them and then he attacks them for six and wins the game. He's like the perfect partner for counterspell basically. Um, and then there's this pack. I guess I could take a Needle Spires just in case I end up going Jeskai. There's Journey to Nowhere. Bright Climb Pathway lets me go black, but I think I need the removal. All right, somehow we are in blue white i guess gideon going late is a great sign journey to nowhere i think is a pretty premium removal spell too we did have to ooh, spell queller i love me a spell queller faint slayer angel is good too but the quelling of spells is important okay oblivion ring flicker wisp uh i don't have any good combos with flicker wisp i guess targeting jace balaran is good but just unconditional removal is pretty nice although oblivion ring is a bit awkward in some matchups Ooh, we wield Skyclave. That's huge. Yeah, white is wide open. Skyclave is like one of the best cards in the cube. And just seeing it, that was 13th pick. That's unreal. I would first pick this card. I think I passed it earlier because I was like, I had taken like Counterspell Sensor, Vendillion Click or something. Um, but if you're like open or, ooh, Sun Titan. Okay, Sun Titan, the Skyclave Apparition is also disgusting. 
Um, if you're like open or unsure where you're going, this is just a great place. It's 3 mana 2 2. That just exiles anything with CMC 4 or less. And they have to kill it to get their token back. And like a token is fine, but it's a lot less scary. Like if they have Jace the Mind Sculptor, you Skyclave Apparition their Jace, and then they just get a 4 4. Like I would much rather my opponent get a 4 4 instead of having Jace. And that's as a worst case scenario. Here's Wall of Omens. Here's the Suspend Bribery. That card seems quite good. There's also Karanos. Um, I think I'm going to take Wall of Omens because I need early plays and then maybe hope to spike that Karanos. Here we take Arid Mesa to make our mana a bit better. I know Steam Vents is gone, so maybe, maybe that was a bad pick, but I like Mana Leak. This isn't really a Delver deck. Golos is sweet and it's P and Karen, but just having, you know, cheap interactive spells is really where you want to be. I kind of want to get like Oust. Or like, I don't know if Swords to Plowshares is a mod, and we'll, we'll take a Glacial Fortress though. Um, maybe Treasure Map comes around or something like that. I might play an Everflowing Chalice. So we really, really want a blue-white dual land because that makes both Polluted Delta and Arid Mesa into duels. So I, if I see Hollowed Fountain, I think I'm taking it over pretty much anything. Um, there's Moldrifter versus Karn. I don't have any four drops. Karn is pretty good. I'll just take a Moldrifter. And even if I don't get dual lands, I'll probably play these fetches because they're good with Sun Titan. That was Jace. Oh man, Jace, Belair, and Sun Titan is such a sick combo. Factor Fiction, Dream Trawler, Isolated Chapel. I'm just going to take Foth. This deck, you know, we're, we're doing a thing where we hold up mana a lot. We have Sensor, Counterspell, Mana Leak, Spell Coiler, Vendillion Click. So it's really important to, when you're holding up mana, be able to have something to do with your mana so you don't just like... Basically, you don't just want to sit there every turn. You want to progress your own board state if they don't do that to their own. And that's exactly where Factor Fiction shines. Uh, I, let's see. Yorian, we have Wall of Omens, Jace Balaran, Skyclave Apparition, Moldrifter, some Planeswalkers. So Yorian's pretty good in this deck. The other option is just Condemn. I'm going to take Condemn. You can, like, it's possible to have too many fives. You just, like, it's really hard to go wrong taking all cheap spells, basically. Like, sure, if Yorian comes around, I'll probably put it in my deck, but... Ooh, Wrath of God versus Archangel Avacyn. This deck probably wants at least one Wrath. Alright, please give me a blue-white fetchable duel. I think they may have gotten rid of the, um, like, the cycling duel lands, which seems kind of weird because they have fetches in, but maybe I just have to get used to fetches being a lot worse now. Because I take them pretty highly, because I'm used to Vintage Cube, where, like, Polluted Delta could grab, like... Steam Vents or Volcanic Island, but now if it's only grabbing Steam Vents, that's not as good. There's a red-white duel if I just want to have, like, all of the red fixing. Um, mass Manipulation is pretty sick, too. It is quad blue and my mana is not very good, though. So I guess I'll just take the extra red splash in case I do want to play red cards. Um, yeah, I'll just take Lyra. Bonfire is also interesting, but Lyra is so good against some decks. This is not red. There's all his dust and seal of cleansing. Um, I actually do kind of like all his dust. I, I feel like seal of cleansing is not really where I want to be. This is just Emrakul like laser beaming the world. I probably don't main deck this. Okay, wow, green is very open. Am I supposed to be green white or something? Like what is going on here? I'll take a Danto Vanguard. I actually could see main decking this card. Actually, ooh, this could be a Dragon's Rage Chandler deck. I do have the red fixing for it. I guess the fact that it has to attack every turn is not necessarily ideal, though. So probably not. But this is really shaping up to be just a good blue-white. Not even control at this point, like just tempo mid-range or something, because we have Brimaz and all that. Uh, History of Benalia, Hazret, Zealous Conscripts. <laughs> Could splash a Magma Opus, Warler Rogue. Probably down to just take a Compulsive Research. Having a bit more card advantage, because right now for card advantage I have Factor Fiction and Jace. And Moldrifter. So having at least one more is... Oh, wait a second. History of Benalia, Sun Titan. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. We're being a bit more aggressive. With this one, I think I just have to take this mana confluence. Like, my mana is so bad. And I have enough playables. Yeah, I'm just going to take this. Like, Giver Runes is okay. I would love Venser. But Venser's not great if you can't cast him. Act of Negation is fine. Ooh, this is probably good Snapcaster Mage deck. We have... Condemn, Sensor, Mana Leak, Counterspell, Factor Fiction, Wrath of God. It's a decent Snapcaster Mage deck. I do like Pact of Negation, but 
my deck is quite a bit more reactive. Like I'm not going to be tapping out too often. So I think Snapcaster Mage just fits a little bit better here. Um, pull from tomorrow might be better than that compulsive research I was looking at. We'll take that. It's kind of weird. This should just be like Blue Sun Zenith. Ooh, six mana Elspeth is a really good card. Sort of temptation to like two, but six mana is this. This is how you close games. Make three one ones, make three one ones, and then you just turn them into flying creatures. Oh my gosh, Celestial Colonnade. Like, I love ECD, Force of Negation and stuff. It's unfortunate these are all in the same pack, but Colonnade is like the single best card I could ask for. It's fixing for my mana, but then it's also just something in my mana base that gives me late game inevitability. It's so good. Especially with the, the gameplay that I'm going to be having of like passing turn holding up mana. But then if I have an active Celestial Colonnade, it just makes like combat really awkward for my opponent. If they have a 3-3 and I just am holding up counter magic, I could also just activate Colonnade and then block their 3-3. It's pretty good. Um, Spell Pierce is good in some matchups. I have Sea Dasher Octopus. I could put that on a flyer is okay. Elish Norn does win some matchups just on her own. But mm, this is Modern Cube. I'm probably going to get up to Elish Norn mana. Okay. I like Elish Norn a lot more than All is Dust. So this is 23 playables and 17 lands right now. And I'm probably not playing any of these red cards. Oh, wow. Why are all these cards in the same pack? What is happening? I mean, I probably need Sphinx's Rev instead of Pull From Tomorrow. The life gain is pretty relevant. Why are these all in the same pack? Like Solitude, a free source to plowshares is insane, but I'm just going to take this. That's super unfortunate. Okay, so we're not playing red. I'll still play Arid Mesa though. Uh, Hangerback Walker is actually good. Although Whirler Rogue is good too. I can play this turn two and just start leveling up stuff. Holding up counter magic. And it's colorless. Okay. Uh, Conclave Tribunal versus Giver. So I'm not playing these. Uh, what is this one? Blue white. Oh, that's blue white too. Okay, my mana's looking a lot better now. I have Oblivion Ring and Skyclave. I'll just take Giver. She's pretty good in some matchups. Venerate and Loxodon if I want to be aggressive. So I think I still need to make some cuts. This deck is looking better and better. Tide Hollow Scholar I can't really play, but I'm not going to give some given either. Um, what am I getting rid of? This just looks like a really clean blue-white. So this is 27 playables. Wow. I need to make so many cuts. Um, I guess I could splash for Explosion. That seems bad. But I'm not going to play Eidolon. Ooh, Revel Arc. Wait, that's awesome. So Revel Arc right now gets back Moldrifter, Apparition... It's power two or less, so it does not get Vendillion Click or Brimaz. It gets back Snapcaster Mage, Wall of Omens, Charming Prince, Adanto Vanguard, Giver of Runes. Um, okay. I think I sideboard that in the grindy matchups because it is a little bit slow. But I like Sun Titan. Yeah, it's pretty good with a lot of the things I have going on. Although I guess I need to decide how much white, like I can cut Brimaz, History, Sun Titan. And just have a much more sleek deck list. And I think I like that a lot more. Like, if I want to be aggressive, I can bring those in. But for now, I'm just a reactive Sphinx's Rev deck that wins with Elspeth or Elishnorn. I can cut Lyra Dawnbringer and just play 17 lands. Oh, I don't love... Actually, let me think about this. I can cut Charming Prince and Giver of Runes. And this lets me play History of Benalia Brimaz. If I'm playing those, I do want a Sun Titan. I need to cut one thing for those. Anger Backwalker? Okay. That seems good. I think this deck is still very solid. 6, 4, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blue sources, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 white. Sort by color. Uh, Yeah, I have so many double white cards. This seems okay. See you guys, round 1. Alright, we're playing against Reading is Tech, which I would agree with. Reading is pretty sick. Oh yeah. This hand, we're going to lead turn one Glacial Fortress, turn two we have Counterspell up, and I guess we need to draw uh, another land. But then we have a good hand. Actually, we need to draw quite a few lands. But I will still hold that this is the perfect opener. Probably playing against, ooh, the Mirror. Well, can, this hand is actually pretty awkward in the Mirror. I will journey to nowhere, Jace. Because it, it seems like I'm not going to have as many targets. Ooh, this is good. Can do this. Journey to Nowhere. I'm not going to have too many targets for um, Journey to Nowhere in this matchup, I think. And Counterspell gets really good on turn four. Oh, never mind. Treasure map. Okay. Hmm. 
So I can Vendillion click, but I really like Evoking Moldrifter. This is so greedy. Wait, this is super greedy. Let's just Vendillion click them at end of turn. I don't really want to draw stuff because I have Counterspell. But I guess I'll see how they scry. Put a stop in my end step. They did put a card on top. Um, all right, let's draw step click them. I'm feeling it. Wait, they scrawled on top, but then they're scrawling on their upkeep again? Okay. <laughs> they knew what they put up there. Now I must know. I wish I could find out which one they drew for a turn. Whoa. Condemn Gristlebrand, Mirari's Wink, Prismatic Ending, Restoration Angel. Uh... Gristlebrand is confusing to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit concerned about that one. Um, Condemn is, I guess, the only scary card here. I kind of want to just leave them. No, because Condemn answers Vendillion Click, and right now they don't have... I guess they could Prismatic Ending Vendillion Click for three. So maybe... This is not the mirror match. Yeah, I guess I just take Condemn. Basically, their whole hand is very clunky. So taking the only efficient spell in their hand makes sense to me. The downside of doing it this way is I don't have the opportunity to evoke Moldrifter because I pretty much have to counter Marari's Wake. Oh, okay, they do that. Oh, that's pretty slick. Maybe I should have taken that. Okay, I draw planes, which is really good. Attack for three. So Condemn is gone. Prismatic Ending is gone. They have a Restoration Angel. And I guess, oddly enough, they are going to be able to cast Gristlebrand in the near future. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they... <laughs> if they don't spend any treasure, they can hard cast Gristlebrand. Fair enough. I took the wrong card. Do they think Persist works with Gristlebrand, maybe? So the hope is that they use a treasure to cast... Oh, okay. Well, at this point, I guess I'm just holding up counter magic for Gristlebrand. Since they have mana to do everything else they could want. The old color is also pretty good. Let's attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can Restoration Angel here. All right, I guess I just passed turn. <laughs> I'm losing this pretty badly because they could Restoration Angel and then still have the mana to untap and cast Gristlebrand. And I guess at this point, we're letting Mirari's Wake resolve as well. Um, Actually, I can... No, I can't Spell Queller that. Okay, you get your Mirari's Wake. Finding the Old Gods. That I can Spell Queller because... They're going to be able to Restoration... No, you can't Restoration Angel that. But their hand is a Gristlebrand Restoration Angel. They loot. They discard the land. So their hand is just Gristlebrand Resto. I draw Elish Norn. Um, they can't actually play Restoration Angel here, which is good. I can hit them for five in the air. If I evoke Moldrifter and Whiff, I do just lose on the spot. So that seems pretty reckless. But now they can hold up Celestial Colonnade to block stuff. And that's not great. I draw a Flicker Wisp. Okay. I mean, I just have to let everything resolve because I can just hard cast a Gristlebrand. <laughs> Flicker Wisp is pretty good against Spell Queller. I will say that. All right. They're casting Gristlebrand. That's very nice. So I can counter that. And uh, Persist cannot reanimate it because it's only non-legendary. So let's hope they go and cast Persist. I guess it won't let them. So never mind. But that seems like the play that they're trying to make. Okay, never mind. I was wrong. Well, they just have Restoration Angel and one unknown. And I get back my Spell Queller, which actually can block. I do draw a land, which is pretty good. Um, they just have Resto. Not that scared of any cards they have. Let's just cast a Moldrifter. Okay, well, I was hoping for a land because it seems like um, Elish Norn is the way that I win this. And just keep back both my creatures. They can't shrink both of them. And they could have just played a Restoration Angel. Um, they can Resto their Flicker Wisp and then re-pop Binding the Old Gods, I guess. Or what would be really sick is Flicker Wisp their Treasure Cove. It comes back as Treasure Map and then they get more treasures. Ooh, Garrick Treasure Cove is fun too. So I think we can all agree Mana Leak is a dead card here. Although, who knows, maybe they get super greedy. So there's a lot of lines of play they can do. Flicker Wisp, they do play Resto. This makes my Condemn much better. Um, they can flicker Treasure Cove, they can fl flicker Binding the Old Gods. The worst option is flickering my Moldrifter. Yeah, that makes sense. Hopefully they just kill... I guess it comes back at end of turn. They activate Colonnade. So... 
guess I kind of want to chump block here, although that forces them to Jace. I can chump block next turn. Kill my Spell Queller. We're in such a bad position. Okay, we do draw the land. We play Island. Um, so Gideon I could play, he'll go up to 8. And then they would need to... Actually, I do kind of like Gideon. The other option is getting playing Sun Titan and getting back Spell or Vendillion Click and then targeting myself to get rid of this Mana Leak. Gideon goes up to 8. Moldrifter doesn't matter. They're going to have 3 attackers. They may give them Trample. Kind of like Gideon more because Condemn feels like a really important part of this turn. We pass turn. Because it just, it feels like they're going to, uh, wait, can they, they can Prismatic ending my Gideon. I'm very dead here. Yeah, we'll see if they see the line. They Jace down tech, Prismatic ending my Gideon. Yeah, that seems to be what's happening here. Or even more fun, they're playing five color Nip Mizzet. Yep. Goodbye Gideon or goodbye Moldrifter, but probably Gideon. Yep. And then they activate Colonnade and then ultimate Garrick and then I super die. His opponent saw the line. They know how to play this game. Um, so this will be 7, 7, 14. I condemn. I chump block. I go to like 1. No, that's not happening. Okay. They saw the line. Uh, what am I doing against this opponent? All is dust, I guess. Seems like it would be a pretty good top deck there. Um... I don't really love Oblivion Ring. I guess it does de deals with Marari's Wake and whatnot. Bring that in. I get rid of Adanto Vanguard. Actually, if I play him turn two, that does hit a lot. Let's get rid of Wall of Omens. Yeah. All right, going first. Yeah, I mean, Wrath of God is pretty decent here. We can Arid Mesa to thin the deck a little bit. I kept seven. Yeah, let's just play this. The, the creature lands are really good against my deck too. Like... I don't have a whole lot. Oh, why am I playing this? Um, I don't have a whole lot that stops them. Crypt Breaker is okay. That is a discard outlet. But I think my plan is to just Wrath of God, whatever they do. Like this is a blue. I'm not going to Vendillion click. Yeah, no attacks, no lands is exactly the situation I want to be in. So let's go Planes. Last turn. They can start discarding cards and making zombies. Flicker Wisp is fine. Ah, they do hit a land. That's not good. Just attack for two. So that's fine. We'll take it. Please be a creature. Medic Lantern. Um, I guess we're going to Oblivion Ring that one. Yep. Oblivion Ring, Chromatic Lantern. I don't want to Skyclave Apparition because I, my plan is to Wrath of God probably, probably next turn. Abrupt decay that. All right, they get it back. Um, can't mana leak it. And they drew a land. Hopefully, again, they just play a creature here. Yes, okay, this is fine. And that's not a zombie, so they can't tap them to draw cards. So now we can kill all the creatures. Play this. I guess I don't really want to draw more lands. So we can polluted delta. Uh, Wrath of God. This has unearth. Wait, that's sick. I didn't realize that's how that worked. So they could just unearth this and get a creature back? Okay. Can't mana leak that. Marari's Wake. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to mana leak the Marari's Wake. Then we can Skyclave Apparition the Chromatic Lantern. Because, like, their mana is so bad. Oh, yeah. Do this. Apparition the Lantern. Then we play this as blue. You can draw step Vendillion click them. You can foretell at instant speed. Okay, I don't know what they could have. Condemn and approach of the second sun, you may keep those. And they have a blue. I don't know what's going on over there. Let's attack for five. Play our creatures out. There's like no way they're casting Doomscar or anything like that. Um, they can activate Hissing Quagmire and block Brimaz, I guess. Ooh, that's good. So, I don't really want to give them Skyclave Apparition. Let's just attack with these. They can block Brimaz. I don't care that decreases their total mana. And their deck is really greedy, so <laughs> I'm down for that. Cast Moldrifter. One, two, three, four, five. Colonnade is excellent. And they die. 
So I get to see what this is at the end of the game, right? Well, they do have white, okay. Go land. Um, so they condemn my colonnade. They take one, two, three, four, five. They're super dead here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it didn't show me what the card was. Let me return to game. How do I do that? There's got to be a way to see the board. I guess it'll be in the game log. Um, so I've already sideboarded against them. They just have super greedy mana. I could bring in pull from tomorrow to just like make sure I have everything. But I guess I don't really want condemn. Let's go to game log. That seems weird because they would have to show the foretold card to reveal that it was a legal thing to foretell, I think. I'm going to keep this. I'm on the draw and I could just draw lands into Jace. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe there's something I'm missing. Okay, so I have Hissing Quagmire again. We draw Vendillion Click, which is good. Uh, do I want to fetch with Polluted Delta? Basically, would I rather draw fewer islands? Yeah, because I could draw counter spells here as well, which would be good, like Mana Leak, Sensor, Counter Spell itself, Planes, Factor Fiction. Yeah, all right. Well, this was a greedy keep, but it like I'm running 17 land. It seems pretty likely that they just have Chromatic Lantern. Okay. Um, I need a white source this turn. Uh, I should have specified untapped, but you know what? You ask for something and you get it. And now they can pretty much guarantee I don't have counter magic. Treasure map, okay. Yeah, their deck is going off now. So how do I attack it at this point? They have all the colors of mana they would need. I draw a land first. I draw Gideon. Um... I guess we're going to do the old main phase Vendillion click so I don't have to discard a hand size. That seems alright. Get their hand, see what they got going on. They kill the click, that's not too bad. Elspeth conquers death. Three or greater. Um, yeah, I feel like a random card is better than that for me. So this Celestial Colonnade is just going to destroy me. They double scry off treasure map. So they drew the swamp. So a planes would be really good so that I could um, skyclave the treasure map island. I think at this point we are into Oblivion Ring the treasure map. That really does limit what they can do with their mana next turn. Because we know their hand is planes plus one random card. And if they hit Binding of the Old Gods in these like next two draw steps, that's okay. So they played the planes that we know about. They just activate Colonnade. Okay, this isn't so bad. I have a couple turns here. Then they play Crypt Breaker. Ooh, and they can even activate Crypt Breaker. I don't love that. This looks like a main phase Foth to me. Taking the pile with two lands. Play Glacial Fortress. Discarding... Rimez? Yeah. Okay, so now we have all the white mana we need. Um, we're just going to play lands for a while, that seems good. And we just have to draw a Wrath. They didn't actually activate Crypt Breaker, so their last card must be something, maybe? I like this. Well, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's the best case scenario given the way my hand is. Okay, so what I can do, actually, is Skyclave Apparition away the coalition relic and then they no longer have blue mana that seems fairly decent then they can start like i think i need to put more things in play than just that so let's just play jace balerian and start drawing cards okay there's island um i guess i could have no i played a planes this turn so they make a thing if they attack with crit breaker obviously i block it i may block the zombie because we're kind of drawing towards a removal spell. I just think it's really unlikely that they find blue mana somewhere. Yeah, I'll block here. Keeping a Jace around is very important. They have Chromatic Lantern? Okay. Um, that's fine. I have Sphinx's Rev. That's very good. So Jace draws me a card. Elspeth. Um, land. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana right now. So, what do I want to do? I can play Elspeth, but I don't have Counterspell up. I can just pass turn with Counterspell and then like Sphinx's Rev. I guess I can pass turn with Counterspell and Colonnade activation. That seems good, actually. I don't mind trading my Colonnade for their Colonnade. 
Oh, they discard Ulamog. Okay, I don't think they know what that persist uh, reanimation spell does. But we'll see. They're tapping mana. It's got to be just colony activation. Yeah, okay. I block here. I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if they attack Jace, that's even better. Attack like that. So let's animate colonnade. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Block the, the scariest to deal with one. When it makes a zombie. Um, do I just want to play Snapcaster Mage? Just to get a blocker down? Because I'm taking five, I go to four life here. Yeah, actually I think I do. I don't think I'm losing to them casting spells. I think I'm losing to them just beating me down and me not drawing stuff. We draw planes. Let's down tick Jason myself. I don't want to give them more cards. Ooh, that's good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Elish Norn. Hit for four. And they need a really good draw to get out of this. Good work, Elish Norn. Very good work. So now I believe we can play Elspeth with Counterspell Backup. I guess we're going to hold up basics for posterity's sake. And that just is like lethal next turn. Elish Norn has Vigilance. They can animate the Quagmire. So, oh no, that doesn't even work. Never mind. They can go for it, actually. This could entice them to do that. They Chump Block. And I have Counter Magic for whatever they can draw. Wow, we really closed the corner on this one. I'm finding the other gods? No. Okay, we took that one down. See you guys next round. All right, we're playing against... I don't even know how to say that. We're going to keep. This hand looks good. It's got Brimaz to block for Jace. Uh, we would be very weak to like some type of thought seize. I will play Arid Mesa because I actually don't want to draw too many more lands. So the minor thinning value, we'll just take it right now. All right, goodbye, Mana Leak. Or no, they could just take Jace actually. That's even worse. They could just take Jace and know about Mana Leak. Okay, well, that's not so bad. Let's get a Plains play Island. Moldrifter is good. So it depends a lot on if they deploy a creature here or not. Because if they just pass with mana up, I think I just play Jace and down tick. Yeah, that seems fine to me. Go island, Jace. Jace is going to go to one, but then he's going to go, like I can uptick Jace. So it's going to be hard for them to kill him. And they already have Phyrexian Arena, so they don't have, like, card advantage is not really an avenue I can win over. Sort of hearth and home. Protection from green and white. Whenever it does combat damage to player, exile up to one target creature you own. Search your library for a basic card, put them both into play. Okay. Don't love that. And they just played a hollowed fountain. All right, I'm liking my chances less if they're playing something like that. Um, the other downside of them having the sword is they can actually just kill Jace. So I guess I just cash him in. Wall of Omens is good. Let's me hold up Sensor. E uh, let's just play Brimaz, actually. Brimaz is pretty sick. Sensor will probably be useful later on, because they're going to be equipping the sword this turn, almost for sure. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, that's so bad. So it sacrifices a Planeswalker, discards a card, and then they get a creature or Planeswalker back under their control. That went pretty poorly. Ooh, I like Oblivion Ring, though. Yeah, I think we just O-Ring the Eldest Reborn. Because they're going to get back Jace or something like that. I can also O-ring their Kite Sail Freebooter and then just deal with the consequences. Right? Then Because basically if they O-ring the Eldest Reborn, I'm going to discard a card and they get a creature back. It's going to be like Jace, which draws them a bunch. If I get rid of this Kite Sail Freebooter, they just have nothing to do with the sword. Maybe I just do that. Play Planes. I can discard, I guess, Wall of Omens. Seems reasonable. They can get back Wall of Omens now. Hmm, Elspeth is good. Uh, guess I just have to wait this turn and see what they get back. Because if I like play Elspeth and they counter or kill her, and then get her back with Elis Eldest Reborn, that's so bad. Um, same with Moldrifter. And I can't Moldrifter into lands for counter spells because I've already played a land this turn. Seeing them get back Brimez is really good. Although this protection from white is really annoying. Fact or fiction. Do that. I can't condemn it. I can't skyclave apparition it. I can skyclave apparition the sword, I guess. 
I think I'm taking the Skyclave Apparition pile. Yeah. Play the land. I don't have a fetchable um, white source, which is really unfortunate. So I take one hit off Brimaz, which is fine, I guess. They drop to eight. I guess, yeah, it makes sense why they didn't take Jace. You know, never mind. Them taking Brimaz was bad for me. Although, at this point, they're just going to hit me and get one land. Like, there are worse things. So I take the hit. I could condemn the cat. I cannot condemn Brimaz again because he has protection from white. I hope they blink Brimaz and then put him in underplay under my control. And opponent's just waiting for this mana leak to run out. So I can't really expect it to be good for too much longer. But I do feel like with how much... I'm not going to fetch because I actually want to draw land here. Perfect. Planes. Um, I do feel like with how much mana they have going on... Let's play Skyclave. Um, that I should be okay. Or that sensor is going to be good is what I'm trying to say. So let's take the sword. I think I can actually just outvalue Phyrexian Arena. Do I just evoke a Moldrifter? No. We just pass. Now I have Mana Leak Sensor Condemned. Solitude with Flash with all the mana left to pay for it. Okay. We gain some life. They get a 3-3. Three, three. So one of these has Flying... 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Cycle sensor, see what we hit. Spell queller. I get a 1, 1. Wait, this doesn't have flying. I always think this has flying. Let's condemn the Brimaz. Take some damage. But we can resolve an Elish Norn here. That's going to be huge. I need to draw land though, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One land. Uh, Alright. <laughs> Cast you. Kill all of your creatures. I'm not assuming they have counter magic just given the composition of their deck. Okay. Play Colonnade. Last turn. As long as, like, let's just hope they don't kill Elish Norn end of turn. Like, if they don't do anything with their mana that's good, they probably have go for the throat or something like that, though. Um, okay. Well, if they have a way to kill Elish Norn, I'm super dead. Alright, Path Exile. That does it. Avacyn plus the illusion kills me. Okay, so they are black-white control. I mean, I pretty much just lost to Phyrexian Arena. So I could bring in all his dust for this matchup, because it does deal with Arena and other things. And if we're doing that, we're getting rid of Oblivion Ring. And running it like that. We can do this, though. Let's go first. Uh, can't keep this one. Oof. No white mana, but we can cycle center. I'm playing River Guide Pathway, and I don't quite know why. We're bottom Wrath of God. Let's play Island. I'll see what's going on. Like, I could just save Sensor to counter... They have planes. Yeah, we'll wait. I think the extra turns I get by having Sensor up, and, you know, maybe countering Phyrexian Arena, are going to be pretty good. Plus, I draw Polluted Delta. I'm not missing land drops, at least yet. Basically, if they just go Swamp Arena, I can't beat it. But if they just go land, that's fine. We're not going to fetch because I don't mind drawing Island. It's, you know, it's not white mana, but it's still not putting me farther behind. Play another planes. Wall of Omens is fine. Um, do I want to cycle sensor? I guess it's too late. Skyclave. Can't really do that. Let's cycle this now. I need to hit a white mana. There we go. Um, pull up Spell Queller. It's just so likely they have something here, right? Okay. Now I'm going to fetch with Polluted Delta because I don't want to draw more islands. Gideon Jura. My Wall of Omens. I don't have Spellcaller at the ready, but they're probably not going to play Phyrexian Arena. And we could draw planes. Perfect. And now my hand's just good. I could play a Danto Vanguard. I could do a whole bunch of stuff. They're doing absolutely nothing. Ooh, Snapcaster's good too. So let's just play this dude. Last turn. I guess they can end of turn Archangel Avacyn. Solitude, my Danto Vanguard. All right. Can't do anything about that. Oddly enough, this Wall of Omens just holds down the fort, though. Hmm. Do I leave them with a Brimaz? Eh, I'm not really that scared of Phyrexian Arena anymore, so let's just counter Brimaz this way, and then hopefully we can resolve or draw a land and play Elish Norn. Okay. Elish Norn, my own Brimaz. No, I think we're better off just casting Gideon here. Gideon kills their Solitude. Because they're tapped out of Archangel Avacyn mana. If they've Restor... Oh, I should have been a little bit scared of Restoration Angel. I'm actually not going to attack. 
No, if they had Restoration Angel, they would have done it. I don't know. Vindicate Gideon, that's fine. I apparition my Spell Queller. I draw a land and then I play Elish Norn. It's perfect. Boom, boom. Now I get my Spell Queller back. Thank you. I path my Elish Norn, that's fine. Get more white mana. Then I can play my own Brimaz in like double block. This attack seems pointless, but maybe it's not. Hmm, Condemn's good. Let's play our own Brimaz. Last turn. This opponent's flooding pretty hard. Sun Titan getting back Skyclave Apparition. Okay. Eating my Brimaz. Acceptable. This is going to be just so many Skyclave Apparitions. Are they attack with Brimaz? Oh, they don't even attack. Interesting. Ooh, Muldrifter's very good. One, two, three, four, five. Could I could draw a counter spell specifically. Three of Banalia. I tapped a little weird. Because I pretty much have to condemn the Sun Titan, so we'll just wait. Um, they can't actually get anything with Sun Titan either, so that's pretty good. So we condemn this, and then we have Snapcaster Condemn at the ready as well. Okay, let's fetch so we don't draw lands. Very few lands left in my deck. There's one of them. Do that. Let's play History of Banalia. I'm sort of saving the Skyclave Apparition for something that scares me, because right now the board states are at parity and I'm I'm pulling ahead now. I kind of want to save Snap Condemn for Archangel Avacyn. Okay, they do nothing. I like that. Factor Fiction is a decent draw. Let's move to combat just with Moldrifter. I could um, Apparition their Brimaz. And maybe that's just what I'm supposed to do. Do I just main phase fall? Because mm, I can play a land, right? I haven't played a land this turn. All right, let's main phase fall. One, two, three, four. They're all pretty good. All this dust is worthless right now. Same with Mana Leak. So it's really between Colonnade, Journey to Nowhere, and Elspeth. Ooh, I kind of like Elspeth Mana Leak. I mean, Colonnade's sick too, but I like this pile. And we will wait to play. I mean, this is basically just Elspeth. Um, but I have Mana Leak, Snapcaster, Mana Leak, which could be good. We'll just pass turn. Kitchen Finks is fine. Pretty good blocker for next turn. So our knights pop off. Go land. Yeah, we're just going to Apparition there. Ugh, that just seems so short-sighted. I can Apparition the Kitchen Finks, actually. I don't need to do anything. Just attack. We'll drift our two knights, get in there. Okay, so they, they have a board wipe. This attack feels like they're playing towards a board wipe. Play Elspeth. Make some soldiers. Is there play like Archangel Avacyn plus Wrath of God? Or Damnation, maybe? Ha, huh, that's funny. Elspeth conquers death dealing with Elspeth. Okay, I mean, that's not too bad. Um, Snapcaster, Mana Leak, they have six mana, so that doesn't stop it. Oh, wow, they pay life for Hollowed Fountain. Right. There is the Languish. I'm one mana short. Goodbye, creatures. Goodbye, most of my win conditions. <laughs> um, this is mana value four or less. So they can get back Brimaz or Skyclave Apparition or Solitude. All right, I guess we just wait for them to get those back and then wrath them away. I mean, they've drawn so many land in the same amount of time that I have. And yet, like, I'm, I have eight cards left in my deck. So this is not incredible for me. Because basically what I'm saying is they have all action left. I've run through all of my action already. And I know I could Snapcast or Factor Fiction, but then I just deck myself. I love seeing them get back Brimaz. Uh, if they drew Archangel Avacyn in the last two turns, this is going to be very hard. Okay, never mind. We Wrath. I have six turns to win the game. Is Gideon gone? Gideon's gone. Let me look at my deck. Oh, I do have Sun Titan as a draw. That feels pretty good. Taking back History of Banalia. So as long as Sun Titan's not like the last card ever, that should be okay. All right. Skyclave Shade is fine. That's why we have Skyclave Apparition. Sun Titan. Perfect. All right. Start with this dude. Eat your friends. One, two, three, four, five, six. Should I wait a turn for Sun Titan? I guess History of Banalia coming back will also win the game. Yes, so that like does just give me an army. 
And then they would need to double spell here to kill Sun Titan before I untap and have Snapcaster counterspell Snapcaster, which seems reasonably unlikely. Counterspell. If they have another one, I mean, sure. What's your last card, opponent? I also have Elish Norn somewhere, right? No, they passed Elish Norn. They've literally dealt with all of my threats. But I've untapped. I have Vendillion Click. I think this is over. Swing out. Hit back. Colonnade. That lets me attack for more damage. And we get to draw step Vendillion Click then. See what you got going on over there. Rebooter Gideon. Uh, I'll take Gideon. Actually, do I even care about Gideon? He can kill my Skyclave. I'll take Gideon. They can Freebooter and take my Mana Leak. Um, they're just going to see that I have Snapcaster Mage for Counterspell and just probably concede. Let's triggers. I draw Jace. Activate this. Okay, okay. Game three. Um, do I want like one more win con, like a Revel Arc or something? I don't think so. I think if I play it right, I should be okay. That was just a really... Oh, I don't need all this dust, maybe. We can, like, Lyra Dawnbringer instead. That's just bigger than, like, everything they have. Yeah, that seems okay. Oh, yeah, this is a hand. So, let's keep in mind all the things that I saw from them. Um, Path to Exile, Skyclave Apparition, Sun Titan getting back Skyclave Apparition. Kite Self Freebooter here would be a little bit annoying. Selfless Spirit is okay. I draw a planes. Um, yeah, let's play Danto Vanguard. I can hold up Counterspell to get around Phyrexian Arena, but a Danto Vanguard does a decent job of just getting in there, and they're just Oblivion Ringing in the Danto Vanguard. That's not the end of the world. All right, let's draw Step Vendil and click them now. That also deals with the Selfless Spirit too, which is nice. See what you got in there. They have Elish Norn as well. They have Vindicate, Ugin, Gideon, Jura, Elish Norn, Grand Cinnabite. Um, I guess Vindicate is the only castable card for them. But that's a, a scary late game hand, but the game plan here is to just kill them before they can do any of that. <laughs> Never mind, they drew Skyclave Apparition. Alright. Fair enough. Hold the fountain tapped. So we need them really badly to not draw land next turn. I do draw land. All right, go ahead. That one, like, Skyclave was way worse than Vindicate there, I think. You can get rid of the draw step stop. All right, let's spell Queller, because this they actually don't have many targets for it. Let's not give them the choice. Let's just kill this one. Hopefully no Gideon, and then I can hold up Counterspell. Nice, okay. And with that, we begin our Conquest. Uh, we could have, like, Solitude... Let me think about this. So if they get an uptick, he goes up to 8. And he becomes a huge problem really quickly. This costs 5 to activate? Yeah. I can play Jason, try and fade a land. I feel like sitting here doing nothing is not going to benefit me. Let's just play Jace. Draw a card. If they miss a land drop this turn, I just win, I think. Um, if they play Gideon, I do still have outs to it, because I have a Jason play. Okay, they do draw the land, which is not amazing, but it could be worse. So Gideon down. So I know two of three cards in their hand. All right, let's fetch. I don't want to draw any more planes. Actually, maybe I do. I don't know. All right, Jace, I draw. Sensor. Sensor is good. I guess we have to attack Gideon, so that just happens. Then we can get down Lyra Dawnbringer. They have two uncastables in hand and one unknown, so this seems worthwhile. Elspeth Conqueror's death here would be gross. Um, and I guess I don't want to take more damage than I need to, so I'm just going to play this, and Sensor's going to be good if I can survive this turn. Come on! You can't have every card the turn I say you need it. Okay, Lyra goes down, Jace dies, things get bad. I do get to kill Gideon, though, so that's something. Chase down. <laughs> They're going to make my counter spells more expensive too. They did miss a land drop though. Um, I can't not kill Gideon here though. That Gideon. Like if they didn't have specifically Elspeth Conqueror's death that turn, it would be so good. So now my counter spells are more expensive. They get back Gideon off of Elspeth Conqueror's death, which I just realized. 
given that, I feel like I just want to ambush this Skyclave apparition with a Snapcaster Mage. So that way I can Vendillion click them. Wait, that doesn't Vendillion click them. It just gives me a 3-3, but it does make Gideon worse, because now if they put Gideon in play, I just have 7 power. Okay, Skyclave Shade with Kicker. I mean, they have taken max advantage of their mana every turn. I do have Condemn. Though this can't block, we can attack. Past turn, we can Sphinx's Revelation for a bunch. They get back Gideon. Wait a minute, he comes back with another loyalty counter? Wait, that's... Oh, that ruins everything. So the reason I attacked with the Illusion is because it, I figured if they downtick with Gideon, um, then I can kill it with the Colonnade. But the, the extra loyalty counter, I have never read this card apparently. It just does everything. Yeah, this is really bad now. All right. Take five. Kitchen Finks is okay. Sphinx is rev. I may be able to snipe Gideon with a kitchen with a condemn. Let's go with <sighs> this is hard. Island Mole Drifter. Okay, we have to discard the hand size, which is going to be Wall of Omens, I guess. Really hoping they attack with Gideon, but they don't. Um, do I care about Skyclave Shade? I am taking 8 damage. I guess I just condemn that. Now I take 3. Then they uptick Gideon. I play Elish Norn, which kills their Kitchen Finks. And I have Counterspell available. Or Sensor. They force attacks. Do they not do anything? Nice. Okay. We're going to go Glacial Fortress, Elish Norn. 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They can Path to Exile, but I have Counterspell. Solitude, we're going to censor that. So they gain a bunch of life, whatever, whatever. Moldrifter hits Gideon down to three. So now, if they have the card that makes me sacrifice a creature, they can Gideon downtick on Moldrifter, and then make me sacrifice Elish Norn. I need to stop calling things that would be perfect for them. Just have, like, nothing here. Okay, they killed that. Okay, they didn't have it. Nice. Now I have actual counter spells still. Cleans. Yeah, let's just attack Gideon with Elish Norn. I don't want to activate Colonnade here. That dies, perfect. Six, we have Elspeth. Make some things. Holding up Factor Fiction. Yeah, this seems mostly over. They had no plays, yeah, okay. I have to be moderately scared of seven mana, and then obviously more scared of eight, but they've just drawn all spells this whole game. Regan Lord Silumgar. So what do they do with Silumgar? They steal my Elish Norn and kill my soldiers. I'll counter that. Let's just attack with Colonnade. Get in as much damage as I possibly can. This is 19. So actually, this is perfect. It puts them dead to Colonnade. That's actually so good. Take Elspeth. Play this. Is it blue? I don't know. And they need a Wrath. Ugin doesn't even do it because basically Colonnade kills them. So they need like Day of Judgment plus Path to Exile. Wolf Omens is okay. All right, let's off, I guess. Yeah, we did it. Oh my gosh, that was close. See you guys in the finals. All right, we're here in the finals. We're on the draw. This hand, um, let's see. It's good against some decks and it's really bad against other decks, but I think I'm going to keep because we have a lot of land. I don't know. Five landers are a bit sketchy, I guess. And if they just have double counter spell, this could get really awkward. But we do have Jace. So let's lead with Island, then Plains, and then we can decide if we want to mana confluence into Jace or go from there, I guess. Ooh, that makes it even easier. So I'm guessing some type of control list. The question we need to answer is, are we going to go for Brimaz or History of Benalia? I think I'm going to go for Brimaz first. He's easier to kill and stuff, but if they do use a counterspell on Brimaz, I'd be pretty happy with it. Uh, worst case scenario, the hero's downfall right now, or go for the throat. So I guess that's one reason why I should have gone for History of Benalia first. Sphinx is rev, okay. Go ahead and play history. Just start getting pressure in play. If I had counter spells, I could hold up factor fiction, but I don't really have anything to do with my like, mana if I don't. They can bribery my Elish Norn. I do have answers to that, but that is pretty brutal against my history of Benalia. But on its own, it is just a 4-7, and I have answers to it. Goodbye, knight. Um, just main phase factor fiction. So both Elspeth and Wrath of God deal with Elish Norn. 
Well, this pile seems like a pretty easy split. Elspeth Vendillion Click versus Wrath of God in two lands. Yeah, let's choose this pile. It's a pretty smart split up by their part, I think, because if I was missing land drops, like, you don't want to give me Elspeth plus lands. And if I want a Vendillion Click before I, like, see if the coast is clear for Elspeth, I do lose my Vendillion Click due to Elish Norn. Pretty unfortunate that they just had it. Um, I will fetch. I don't want to draw more land. <laughs> Thanks, History of Benalia. You did, you did good, I guess. Um, I could just jam Elspeth, but that seems a bit greedy. Just wait and see what happens. They know we have Vendillion Click. Ooh, Creeping Tarpit is sneaky. So that deals with the Elspeth. Um, and now, and they took my Wrath of God too. Classic. I guess we just rev for three. See what we can draw. Because just like a any removal spell does deal with Elish Norn. Unfortunately, Gideon does not. Um, we need to go Island. Sun Titan is a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, if I play Gideon, they just animate Creeping Tar Pit and kill Gideon. So that doesn't work so well. I guess I'm just going to play Jace. That's pretty bad too. I've been dealing click them and see what's going on. Main phase. Unburial Rights, Gristlebrand, Dream Trawler. So if I leave them with Unburial Rights, this is that. So they're away from casting Dream Trawler. I guess I just take Unburial Rights because it's stronger than the average card. So I could have just gone for it and gotten there. I can tap out for Jace. Jace just dies. But he does gain me a little bit of life. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could just counter a Dream Trawler if they cast it. Let's just wait and hold up Mana Leak, I guess. The only reason for main phase Vendillion Click is that way I can uh, not have to discard a hand size. They don't activate Tar Pit. That's good. So Unbarrel Rights is gone. So I know most of their hand. And I guess Gideon can hold down Creeping Tar Pit. They played a plane, so I actually know roughly what they drew. And I'll hold Sensor because it will counter Gristlebrand eventually. Mana Confluence, Elspeth, kill Elish Norn, pass turn. Then I can Sun Titan back History of Banalia. Potentially. Very Time Raveler. Okay. Super annoying card. Are they just creeping tar pit? I mean, this means I can play Gideon relatively safely. I don't really have to worry about like holding up counter magic. They kill Elspeth. Yeah. Cycle Sensor. Draw land. I can also get back Vendillion Click and take Dream Trawler because they did just reveal they have double white. They can also just hard cast Gristlebrand. <laughs> And they have Bitter Blossom? Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's go Plains. I'm dealing with both Dream Trawler and Gristlebrand. I can Sun Titan plus Jay's Bolaren. Yeah, let's Sun Titan a Vendillion Click here. Ability, yes. Vendillion Click looks at their hand. Dismiss the hand before I see it again. Vindicate, Dream Trawler, Gristlebrand. Um, I guess I just take Gristlebrand. And I can Vindicate my Sun Titan. Going to 9 means I have one less turn against Creeping Tar Pit. But they can start attacking with Better Blossom anyway, so I just need to draw something off this chase. And we'll draw. Draw a land, okay. So they can Vindicate my Sun Titan, play a Dream Trawler, and that's pretty awkward. It would be really nice to be able to Mana Leak both of these. They drew Timeless Dragon too, okay. Play Dream Trawler. They didn't even go for Vindicate, which is interesting to me. Oh, Guy Clave Apparition, that's really good. So Jace lets me draw. Draw a land. Let's attack with Sun Titan? Yeah, attack with Sun Titan at Teferi, and not attack with Vendillion Click. This is going to get back History of Benalia. They chump block with a fairy. Um... I guess at this point, one, two, three, let's Skyclave Apparition there to Fairy. Or, yeah, because I have Counter Magic available, I can also hit Bitter Blossom. But I think being able to counter stuff is probably just more worthwhile. We do that, we play a land, I uptick Gideon, and I have Mana Leak available. Okay, okay. They have two cards in hand. One is a Vindicate, which I guess I should have known about, and the other is a Plains. Wait, this is really bad, because they just Vindicate my Gideon and then attack it with Dream Trawler Creeping Tar Pit, but then I hit them for a bajillion damage. Okay. Interesting. No Creeping Tar Pit. 
That's probably good news. They do get to draw off Dream Trawler. But I have infinite chump blockers with Vendillion click. And there is still Counterspell somewhere in my deck, I promise. Eternalize the Dragon. So it's a 4-4. Four, four. Um, now Snapcaster Mage for Wrath of God is something I could do. We draw planes is not a huge deal. In case I draw. Okay, that's a lot of planes. Um, but we can attack. Play planes. Uh, let's actually cast Moldrifter first. Well, let me think about this. What do I think the odds are of me going Snapcaster Day of Judgment? That kills essentially all of my win conditions. So I think the odds are basically zero. So let's Moldrifter. Journey to Nowhere is excellent. So that can eat the Timeless Dragon, and then I just have to somehow find a way to race the Dream Trawler. Um, if I target Dream Trawler, they can just discard a card to give it Hexproof. Let's just target Timeless Dragon. And then their attacks this, or yeah, this turn I just swing with a bunch of stuff. Attack, attack. I'll get back Vendillion Click. Get their hand. Now I can double block with Moldrifter Vendillion Click. Ooh, I like taking pull from tomorrow. So their hand is Champion of Wits 1 Unknown. Okay. Pull from tomorrow, Dream Trawler is very scary. So they're at 13, they make another fairy. Going to be pretty hard for them to save Dream Trawler, given, I mean, I know what's in their hand right now. Blood Chief's Thirst with Kicker on Sun Titan. So I guess we Spell Queller. Because then it will not have Kicker when it comes back, and then it only kills like a token or something. Yeah, then they only have Champion of Wits, which draws them more with Dream Trawler, but this is where I wish they had not stolen my Elish Norn. <laughs> it would be pretty nice to be able to play that on this board, but I think all my win conditions are out here. They discarded a Massacre Worm? What is in their hand? <laughs> what? Okay, that's a bit scary. Ooh, Condemn is not that good, actually. Um... So, I don't have any targeted removal. They have one card in hand. If I can just tap down the Dream Trawler, I win. I'm trying to see, think if I have any... Let me look at my deck really quick. If I have any way to target Dream Trawler, I think I have lethal. What does this look like? I can go Snapcaster Mage, Factor Fiction. That takes one, two, four. I Oblivion Ring the Dream Trawler. Um, they discard a card to counter it. Sun Titan gets back Oblivion Ring. They block Sun Titan, Vendillion Click, Gear. And then they take, like, wait, let me look at this again. They can also activate and block with Creeping Tar Pit. So I don't think Snapcaster Faction Fiction works because it kills me. But if I can hit Oblivion Ring here, I'm in very good shape. So let's Snapcaster Sphinx's Revelation, right? There's no Oblivion Ring in play. There's none in my graveyard. Let's draw like three. Have I played a land yet? No. Uh, I kind of want Mana Leak. They discarded Massacre Worm, so let's just draw two cards. I need to hit Oblivion Ring in these two. And this lets me still hold up Mana Leak. I did not hit it, but I did draw a Celestial Colonnade. Okay, let's play Colonnade. Let's attack with Sun Titan. So I attack with these Knights. They do just get a free block with Dream Trawler. I can't believe I didn't hit it. Um, I could do that next turn, though. Actually, do I even risk losing my Sun Titan? I think the answer might actually just be no. But I get back History of Banalia. Okay, attack. Get back History of Banalia. Getting more knights. Easy ability, yes. That is kind of the expected block. Yeah, basically, if I had drawn more with Snapcaster Mage, I couldn't hold up Mana Leak or Counterspell, which felt important because they discarded Massacre Worm, which tells me they have something better than that on this board, which is hard to imagine. Maybe they just didn't read the card. I have no idea. So I think I can do this unless Oblivion Ring is like the actual last card in my deck. They draw a bunch of cards here too. They discard Karn Island. They play a land. They thought scour me. I have to counterspell that. That's probably the card they kept. <laughs> thought scouring me. Okay. Um... Now they have two cards in hand, though, is the problem. Tonto Vanguard, okay. Um, so how many blockers do they have? One, two, they can also activate Tarpit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they can take one, two, three, four, five, six. I get four attackers. That's going to be like eight. 
uh, I have one more, so that's going to be like 11 damage, but then they gain 3. So I actually do have to wait until next turn. Play planes. And if I attack with Sun Titan, it trades with Champion of Wind's double fairy rogue. Maybe swinging out is okay. I only lose a couple creatures. On the back swing, let me think about this again, right? They can block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 creatures. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. So I'll get 4 attackers through. And it's going to be Moldrifter, 3 knights. That only hits them for 8. I don't think that's correct. And the Dream Troller is really big. If I attack with Sun Titan, it makes my Oblivion Ring top deck worse. Because they just block with Champion of Wits, Fairy, Fairy, and kill my Sun Titan. But then their draws is pretty bad. So I think I do attack with Sun Titan. And do I have any Snapcaster Mage? I don't have any good Snapcaster targets. Okay. Let's get back Brimaz. Okay, that worked out. I just eat a flirt, very rogue, and I got another attacker for next turn. So next turn, History of Benalia will trigger. I have a 50% chance of drawing Oblivion Ring. There's the battlefield attacks. Target opponent sacrifices a creature, planeswalker, discards a card, and loses three life. Okay, that's fine. Sacrifice a creature is going to be Snapcaster Mage. It's actually good to get that back. Discard my land. I go to eight. Now I have Mana Leak to counter whatever nonsense they might have. And I just need Oblivion Ring, so they don't have the, the this thing. Alright, 50% chance, here we go. There we go. Nice. So we go O-Ring, they discard a card to give Dream Trawler Hexproof, I imagine. And then we can get it back with Sun Titan. Or no, that's not true, but this just taps it down. Discard Coalition Relic. Activate this. We just attack and hope that we have lethal. I don't really have any other options here. Um, I can get back Snapcaster Mage. Which I guess is pretty good. I can Snapcaster or Counterspell this turn. I'll just get History though. If they had anything that was worth countering, they would just do it right now. Activate Tar Pit. Yeah, so Tar Pit's probably going down as well. I hope this is lethal. I don't actually know. Look, there they there. They take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, they're super dead. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's one heck of a game. So. Against their deck, Dream Trawler is really bad against Lyra Dawnbringer, so that feels worth bringing in just for that interaction. And um, Wrath of God is good sometimes, but I think in general I don't love it. I could cut Elish Norn because it makes bribery worse, but like even if they just get Lyra Dawnbringer, it's going to be hard for me. Bribery is such a boring card. Actually, it's kind of fun, but not at the same time. I also realized Magic Online. Rather than saying that like you're, it's game two, it just says you lost the die roll. So that's why I'm not going first. It's weird how unlucky I get game two after I win game one, you know what I'm saying? I'll keep this. Good against bribery. I have all my uh, really big haymakers in hand. I get to go island. Hopefully no turn two bitter blossom. Okay, good. I didn't really see any counter magic from them either. Okay, nothing. Um, I can slam Brimaz. That's really bad if they have three fairy. I like doing it though. Actually, it's not so bad if they have three fairy because they have to bounce him and then I just replay Brimaz. Yeah, now I just have Brimaz in play. That seems pretty sick. Um, I'm going to play an untapped land, so I have Mana Leak and Counterspell, and I'm just going to play this as blue. But then they can Creeping Tarpet block the cat. Oh! <laughs> My Brimaz Gambit paid off. So now I can end of turn Mana Leak, their Factor Fiction. Pull from tomorrow. How does they don't even care about that? Draw two, discard one is fine. I was expecting Factor Fiction. Oh, I see. They can um, try and reanimate a Gristle Brand now. Yeah, now I have to like double counter on Burial Rights. All right, I guess I'm double countering on Burial Rights. That does eat two of their turns. Colonnade, attack them again. Um, ooh, actually, now I don't even have to counter it because they go for it. If they pay life to draw cards, they lose the game. Yeah. I want a post combat massacre worm? Okay. Counterspell that. Actually, do I care about that? That kills my cat. I don't care that much. And then I just journey to know the massacre worm. If I counter this, my opponent takes six. Actually, yeah, this, this works. I counter this, 
And then whatever creature they get back, I can just journey to nowhere it and then just kill them. Ooh, and I draw a land so I can just hit with Colonnade. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Put them down to 1. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, that's another trophy. We have 3 trophies out of like 4 leagues? 5 leagues maybe? Um, this deck was awesome. Just really good blue-white control. Colonnade came in clutch. Sun Titan was really good here too. The Sun Titan history of Benalia synergy is really strong. Um, Elspeth was good. Elish Norn was good. I just like the deck. Uh, Wrath of God was, I guess, like the worst card here. Maybe like a Danto Vanguard. I don't know. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.